Self Love is the New Sexy, the podcast devoted to helping you overcome life's most painful and stubborn challenges so you can feel great, have more energy, and live stress free every day. To reach your full potential, simply work with the powerful spiritual principles that are readily accessible to everyone. It's easier than you think. And on today's show, W. Mark Watts is going to show you how starting with self love is the key to joyously and harmoniously making that happen. Hey, everybody, it's W. Mark Watts. I want to say hello, welcome, and thank you for hanging out with me for another episode of Self Love is the New Sexy. And today's episode, it, I want to lighten the mood a little bit, lighten the load a little bit. I know the um, previous episode, when I recorded yesterday, was a little bit heavy, so I felt the need to lighten things up today. And today's episode is about, so I've talked about in the past, you know, doing more of what you love, what you enjoy, what sets your heart on fire, what, you know, what makes you happy. And so I want to highlight one of those things for me that will be occurring this weekend. So again, the topic for today is simply this, do more of what makes you happy. Do more of what makes you feel good. Do more of what makes you feel light and do more of what comes naturally to you. So what am I doing this weekend? So if you've listened to some of the previous podcast episodes, I've mentioned the fact that I have a brotherhood of about 13 guys that we all met in college and um, most of us did not know the other one prior to coming to Clemson University back in 1987. And uh, so we all met up for whatever reasons we clicked. You know, I think the universe brought us together for a reason. And I can honestly say that all of us are still tight, still good friends to this day, you know, some 30 some odd years later. And so what's happening this weekend is uh, one of my buddies, one of them is flying into Charlotte. Another one is driving down to Charlotte from Richmond. And then one of my other buddies already lives here in Charlotte where I live. So we're all going down to the Clemson University football game. So for those of you who are in the States, and follow college football, you know that we have a pretty good football team and and have had a pretty good program for a while now. And uh, and so we're very proud of that. And we follow them closely. We often have group text where we're all going back and forth, complaining, applauding, you know, doing the normal, uh, the way whatever we way we feel uh, comfortable or feel hits the moment and expressing how we feel about the game or the program. So And we all enjoy sports, so we're all huge sports fans. So we're all going to get together, going to drive down to the game and go to the game on Saturday and uh, hang out back in our old stomping ground for a while, and then we'll come back. So, And then Friday we'll be hanging out. Uh, A couple of them are playing golf, et cetera. So um, in short, that is one of my greatest pastimes. You know, when I came, when I went to Clemson, I um I used to I recall when I was younger I, I have three older sisters so I used to wish that I had an older brother or just a brother uh, because a lot of the friend a lot of my friends growing up had brothers and so you know there's a there's a different camaraderie there's a different type of interaction that you have of course with your brother than as as opposed to your sisters. And my sisters were, you know, a little bit older than me as well. So that created even more of a gap. But I did want that brother sometimes because I'd see them interact and and I wish that I had a brother. Well, you know, fast forward to college when I got there and realized that I had met a group of guys who were all really cool. We all got along well. We all had similar interests. We all were working toward a goal. You know, at least that short term goal was getting that college degree moving ourselves to the next level, uh, preparing ourselves for that next level. And uh, it it was really easy. It was really light. And before you knew it, you know, I started out with three brothers, expanded to five and six and seven and eight, and ended up, by the time I graduated, there was, like I said, 13 of us who were all really close, who hung out, who partied together and had a great time. And um, it was a real blast. So I'll give you one quick example of, 
something that we did that really bonded us and connected us and kind of gave us somewhat of a legacy within the Clemson University family, if you will. Um, we moved, so there were on-campus apartments. And so in our junior year, because we all were the same year, we all, you can choose to move in and it's first come, you know, first served basis. So we were lucky enough to all get accepted. So there were eight of us at that time. And four of us, we got an apartment on the, on the end of the row of apartments. And then, and we had designed this. And then four of us, four more of us got an apartment on the end of the row, but across the breezeway. So essentially we were both at the end of this apartment row, just on opposite sides of it. So all that separated us was a small breezeway, but you could just walk through, pass through. So what we did was we were, we decided we'd have parties. So at the beginning of every semester and at the end of every semester, we would have parties and we would create what's called PJ, which is a big fruit punch that has grain alcohol in it and fruit, et cetera. So when we would do that, it, the pa parties beca became so popular that that whole breezeway, which was, was, which was nice size, would become filled with students and even the walkway behind our apartments would become filled with students. And of course we had music and um, you know, we had a great time. And like I said, we did this at the beginning of every semester for a couple days at least, and then at the end of every semester for a day or two as well. And so the parties became infamous and we had such a great time. And that was just an example and we put that on together. You know, we all worked together to, to put that little party together and we all had a blast and that was one of many of the very fond memories that I have. I mean, we, we blew stereo speakers because we, had, we were playing it too loud. You know, we took turns DJing. At one time, we even created our own mixtape so that we could just play the tape while we were able to just, you know, walk away and dance and, and, and play, have fun with everybody, et cetera, et cetera. So that was just one of the many examples of what we did. So anytime we get together, it's a really great time. Even though we all live, or most of us, we live in different cities. Uh, most now, we all are at least in the southeast of the United States, so we're not far away from each other, but we have our families and other responsibilities and other things that we're into, but we always come together, and when we do, it's a great time. So I'm looking forward to having a great time, another great time, with four, and then we're meeting one of our other buddies who will be at the game uh, in Clemson. So we'll meet him there. So there'll be at least five of us together uh, hanging out a little bit in Clemson at a football game back in our old stomping ground, which brings, I think, all of us joy. And we get to catch up and, and trade war stories and all that good stuff. So I say all that to say, what is one of those things that really brings you joy? You know, particularly, where it pertains to other people, you know, people that you really enjoy hanging out with, that really make you feel good, that really give you that light feeling. You know, most of the time we're together, we're joking with each other, we're laughing, you know, we're sharing uplifting stories, you know, we're, and in, you know, as we've gotten older, you know, it's also become a great place for us to learn from each other and bounce ideas off of each, each other and share stories, um, you know, share our life stories and, you know, confide in each other because these are my closest brothers. You know, if anything, I really need to discuss with somebody, there, someone in that group is one of the first ones I think of and one of the first ones I go to to talk to about, to share it, to ask for advice, to see if they've been through something like that and what they would suggest or just to see how they feel about it. And sometimes just to have them listen, you know, oftentimes we don't really need any advice. We just want someone to listen. Right. And so we all do that for each other. You know, you can just tell the other one, hey, man, can you just listen to me for a minute? I just need to chat about something. And, you know, they're there for you. So it's that type of brotherhood, you know, real brothers. None of us are related by blood, but I know that we're all related because of the way that we interact and the way that we love each other and the way that w it feels when we're around each other. So who is that person or persons for you? Who are those people that when you're around, you just really feel like a million bucks? 
the conversation's light, even though some of the topics may be heavy. You know, we all have kids. So or the majority of us, I think all of us except for one has kids. So, you know, we have and, and they're all grown now or at least in high school. So we have those stories, you know, that um, bring it, raising kids can bring up. And of course, your own life trials and tribulations that you go through. So who is that person or persons that, you know, you really enjoy being with that maybe you haven't seen or talked to in a while? Then what I invite you to do is to make a plan, set a plan right now to call, text, visit, hang out with that person or persons. Um, it's super important, right? Because again, taking care of yourself really means doing more of those things that make you feel good. You know, it's not any really more difficult than that, more, more complex than that. That's what life is about, really doing the things that make you feel good, that bring you joy, set your heart on fire, and that you just have a ball doing. And so I always have a ball when I'm with my boys. And so I'm looking forward to hanging out again this weekend and looking forward to a great game, looking forward to some great conversations, some laughs and some reminiscing. And, um, you know, we make this a, a, a usual routine now. Um, at least once a season we get together and um, and then we do some other things together. We do we have a big uh, event we do every couple years, too, where we all try and get meet at a centralized location where we can get together, have fun and fellowship as well. And then, of course, we constantly are talking throughout the year, especially during football season and basketball season, because, again, we're all big sports fans. So who are those people that really that you really enjoy hanging out with? You have a lot in common with and you have a lot of differences with so that you can not only share like experiences, but you can share different experiences so that we all can learn and enjoy and just bask in the beauty of what we all bring to the table. So who is that in your life? So I invite you to go ahead and send that text, make that phone call, make that trip, make that plan, schedule a trip to go visit them so that you can really hang out, mix those energies and share that beautiful bond that's there for the sharing and just really truly enjoy yourself. So do something that lights you on fire where it pertains to other people. And if that doesn't, that's not, what you really want to do right now, then do something else that you truly enjoy that sets your heart on fire, regardless of if other people are involved or not. So take that to heart. You know, life is short. It's a short trip, a lot shorter than we think. So we have to make the most of every moment. And, uh, you know, I really enjoy hanging out with my boys. So I like making that a part of my uh, consistent part of my schedule, a consistent part of my life and my moments. So that's all I have for you today. Thanks for hanging out with me again. It's always a pleasure. Hit me up wherever you catch me. Uh, this, is a, this is a conversation, you know, not just a one-way street. I enjoy interacting with you all. You all are my family. And uh, stay tuned. And I look forward to speaking with you all again soon. Bye now. You've been listening to Self Love is the New Sexy with W. Mark Watts. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Also, make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our show on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, or wherever you listen to podcasts.